So as we are doing our revisions, we are going to notice that the voltage divider room is one of the most important uh, simplification that is needed as we are going to be working with the superposition, uh, also some other calculations there on the thevenin, uh, some other calculations on the noton, the uh, maximum power transfer. There is a part that the voltage divider will be needed. All right, what exactly are we considering? In a circuit where we are given a supply voltage, which is Vs, which we can also refer this as Vt, the total voltage, this voltage can be subdivided into these two, that is V1 and V2. V1 across R1 and V2 across R2. We do understand that V1 plus V2, the sum of these two is supposed to give us the total voltage, which is true. But how can we determine V1 direct? Let's say we are given these resistors. You can determine the voltage across, v, uh, across R1, this one, which is V1. By using the formula, so you're going to have the resistor across that voltage, which is R1, so it's going to be R1 over the sum of the resistors, that's R1 plus R2, times the supply voltage, which is our Vt. So take note, when using the voltage divider rule, there is this resistor here is across this one, V1. Okay, this resistor 1 is the one for V1. So if you're calculating V1, you use R1. Meaning to say, if you're calculating V2, so it's going to follow that, and V2 is going to be, use R2, okay? You're working with the uh, V2, so it's going to be R2 over the sum of the resistors times what? The supply voltage, which is our total voltage. This is what you're supposed to have on your voltage divider rule. So meaning to say, with these resistors and the supply, we can calculate these two voltage without calculating the currents, without calculating current, then current terms, no. That is the voltage divider rule. So in this example, we're going to consider uh, to calculate the voltages determined by calculation from the given data of the network, the magnitude of voltages V1 and V2. The magnitude you are given R1 12 ohms, R2 uh, R1 18 and R2 12 ohms. Calculate V1 and V2. You're having a supply voltage of 50, which is the total voltage. So how can we determine V1? From our voltage divider rule, we saw that V1 can be calculated by using R1 over the sum of the resistors times the supply voltage, which is our Vt, which is our supply. So with this, we can simply substitute our values. That's V1 is going to be resistor R1, which is 18. So that's 18 over the total of R1 and R2. You add these two. 18 plus 12 times 50, which is the voltage. So meaning to say we are going to obtain our V1 in volts. That is 30, uh, 30 volts. Using the same voltage divider rule, we can calculate V2. We saw that V2, it can be calculated as R2, the one that is affecting V2 over the sum of the given resistors times the supply, which is the total voltage. So in this case, we are given everything. So R2 is 12. So minus we've got 12 over what? The sum of the resistors 18 and 12. That's 18 plus 12 times the supply voltage, which is 50 volts. That's it. So this voltage can be divided into two. That's the voltage divider rule. We are dividing the 50 volts. So that was going to be 20 volts. So V1 is calculated. We can see that it is 30 volts. V2 is 20 volts. Remember what I said. The sum of these two is supposed to give us what? The supply. Is it what is happening here? Is it what we're getting? 30 plus 20 is equal to what? That's 50 volts, which is the supply voltage. That is to mean that these voltages that we have calculated 
are true. And this voltage divider rule is actually true. Because if you are to add these voltages now, then you do not obtain that. It means that is wrong. So we divided the voltage of 50 into two. Another one for V1, another one for V2, where the sum of these two should give you the supply voltage. So that's your voltage divider rule. We just need to work with more questions uh, as much as you can. So you can also be given a second, most uh, particularly in your revisions. Like I said, if you are to work out with the superposition theorems, um, the maximum power, whatever they've been in, you're going to have circuits of this nature. You might be having circuits of this nature. All right. Where maybe we are given the supply voltage V1 being uh, 15 volts, uh, volts, and this is R1. Uh, let's say this is equivalent to 6 ohms, and this is R2, and let's say this is 4 ohms. In this case, you are being asked to calculate the voltage V2, which is across here. Maybe you are given a network that is uh, something like this, where you are given the points A and B, and you want to calculate the voltage across here, the points A and B, which is the voltage across this R2. So you can also call it V2 or you can call it uh, VAB. So I'm just considering this like you're now into those circuits. Maybe you're under a thevenin. You want to calculate your thevenin voltage and you want to apply the voltage divider rule. It can be applicable because this voltage can be shared to say what will be the voltage drop across this resistor and the voltage drop across this resistor since these two are in series. It's a series combination that we are seeing, just like what we have here, but only the way that it is being drawn. So it's still one and the same thing. So you can calculate the voltage across AB. Okay, so in this case, the voltage across AB can be calculated by using this as R2 because it's the voltage across R2. The voltage AB is equal to V2, voltage across resistor R2. Let's just say VR2. So meaning to say we are going to use the resistor R2 on top. So that will be R2 over the sum of these resistors R1 and R2 times the supply voltage, which is your V1. So when you are now talking of the thevenin voltage, this and that, we are simply going back to those voltage divider row again. So you must understand this. So that's our R2, which is going to be 4 over the sum of the resistors uh, R1 and R2. That is 6 plus 4 times V1, which is 15 volts. So that is going to give us uh, something like uh, 6 volts. So it's going to be 6. So meaning to say the voltage drop here will be 6 volts. If you do the same thing here, Going to have a voltage drop if you add those, they must add up to 15. So these are the typical questions that you must be given. Uh, that you might be given. Let's just revise as much as we can so that we can use this voltage divider rule in the following uh theorems that we are going to have in our next classes.